Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and it is Slip Joint Sunday. At least if I get this out on time. No, that won't be a regular thing. Just like Fixed Blade Friday. Yeah, it happens sometimes, but not really all the time. This is a knife by Civivi called The Fracture. This is model C2009 with a letter behind it. I think there's five different colors that you can get this in. Uh, G10, 8CR14 MOV stainless steel. It's got a gray wash, so just like a black wash, but gray. And uh, left and right pocket clip. It's a good slip joint. I mean, I really, really like this thing. Looks like they're discontinued. Get them while you can. They're all overweight mountain knives, and that's also the best price that I could find. Uh, off the top of my head, what is it, $28.50? Take off 10%, that makes it 25 and change. That's pretty good for U.S. dollars. It's about 31 Canadian dollars if you buy from White Mountain Knives. And slip joint knives, even if you buy slip joint knives from the United States, if it gets stopped at the border and checked, you'll still get it no problem at all if you're in Canada. So zero risk whatsoever if you buy a slip joint knife. Well, not zero risk. Packages can get lost. It's pretty rare. In the whole time I've been doing Canadian Cutting Edge, uh, one package that I know have is, has gotten lost, and that's one of the packages that Russell was sending to me. Uh, that's CJRB Russell, Artisan Cutlery Russell, I should say. He actually sent me the documentation, so it seems valid that that package actually got lost, that one. But uh, other than that, I've had packages delayed, seriously delayed sometimes with COVID. They've all come through, though. To all my customers, they've arrived, and knives to me, they've all arrived. So the postal system is actually quite good. Uh, and White Mountain Knives just ships through the post. You can spend up to $200 before you have to pay any duty or taxes if you're Canadian, so no problem. This knife also comes as a Tanto instead of this drop point blade. Price is exactly the same at White Mountain Knives. I've also got links for Amazon. Those prices are a little bit more. Uh, the Tanto ones on Amazon, the black one is around 30 bucks US, but uh, they've got two other colors, and they're in the 50s for some weird reason. It's the way Amazon works, right? Uh, in Canada, you're going to pay a whole lot more for this knife. It's going to be $19 more Canadian to buy this knife. That means you can buy three of these at White Mountain Knives for less than it costs to buy two of them at Blades Canada, also known as Warriors and Wonders. But that's enough jibber-jabber about all that kind of stuff. You guys want to look at this thing, don't you? So let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at it. Keep watching. If you're one of my regular viewers, you're tired of this part already, but I get new viewers all the time. So whitemountainknives.com is the place I buy knives. Most of my knives come from there. And uh, I just get, I've never had a knife from there get stopped at the border. I've bought over 200 knives from them, and I get them shipped directly to Canada. They come through the mail, and they arrive. Zero problems. I've had other customers tell me the exact same thing. I did have one guy tell me they had a problem once. Uh, so it's not foolproof. But when you save that much money, like I said, you can buy three of these at White Mountain Knives or get two of them in Canada. That means if one-third of my knives got confiscated, I'd still be saving money and I don't have one-third get confiscated, it's in the single digits of percentage. It's like, this year, it's like 2% of my knives have been confiscated. It just doesn't happen a lot. But if you only buy one or two knives a year and that package gets confiscated, that's a really big deal for you guys. So I do understand those guys that want to buy in Canada. So yeah, what do we got? We've got 8CR14 MOV stainless steel and... It's written right there on the blade in tiny writing. And other than that, there's no writing on the knife. Civivi, I love it that you put it on there and that you kept it very small. And then there's the only C that makes it Civivi. Civivi does the best of any knife brand that I know of as far as the way I like to see writing on the knife and branding on a knife. I like it minimalized. On the ricasso or some other place you know maybe on the spine of the handle or you know somewhere else even on the inside that's usually very high-end knives put it on the inside and you know and then just the c you know nothing on the pocket clip 
just great. I love the finish on this blade. Very nice. Big, huge opening there to keep the blade a lot lighter with still a thumb ramp to give your thumb something to sit against. And at the tip, you've got a swedge and then you've got a hollow grind. Very thin behind the grind. This is the biggest blade. Uh, sorry, this is the thinnest I've ever had a knife that is over three inches. And uh, I'll tell you how thin it is later on. I'll give all the dimensions and everything. It is a slip joint uh, back spring knife and a half stop right there. And closed. The spring holds it closed when it's supposed to be closed. And, you know, the half stop is a safety feature. Once it's open, the spring holds it open. You have to push hard, but, you know, see, it wants to stay open. And if you push it up to the half stop, then you can close it, just keeping your fingers clear. I really like slip joints. They're very safe when you get used to them. And, you know, I grew up with slip joints, so I found I got used to them the whole my whole life. I was used to them. This uh, back spring, actually, no, I was going to finish the blade here. There's, you can sort of call it a sharpness trial, and it's perfect. It ends just as the plunge ends right there, so that's really good. So that's a nice blade. It's a nice hollow grind that slices very, very well. It's uh, good and sharp from the factory. Uh, the sharpening was not that great. This side was sharpened very well, but this side was quite wonky with the grind angles, and I'll tell you that later on. The handle shape, I quite like it. It's comfortable in the hand. You know, you've got that little bit of a transition here to help it sort of fit into the palm of the hand. Uh, a little separator between your first two fingers and your second two fingers. That feels really good. You know, it even feels, you know, good in reverse. Or if this kind of grip is a little less comfortable, but you're not going to use this as a heavy duty knife. I call this an urban EDC knife. That is light to some mid duty kind of work that you would do with this kind of thing. It's like a not heavy duty. It's not what it's for. The handle's got chamfering and it changes around here. You know, it just, the angles change a little bit. Looks really good. Other than that, it's a flat slab G10. The uh, screws are good flush screws. I really like that. And these are T8 screws to take the knife apart. I'll show you the insides in a little while. The uh, spring comes to the back and there's your lanyard hole. And that's perfect. That is how I love a lanyard hole to be. It's uh, open to the back, and you know it's a nice hole there. The paracord's not going to bundle up and out. It's a perfect lanyard. You see a couple holes here, and that's because the pocket clip can go on either side. It's got flush screws. Those are T6 screws, but good and flush. So when you go put this into your pocket, it easily slides over your pocket. And then the top is flattened out so you don't have sharp spots on your hand. So it's very comfortable. Let's uh, demonstrate it going into a pocket. If we can get the camera to focus here. There we go. So let's demonstrate it going into the pocket. See how it wants to climb over. And there you go. This gray color is quite good. It just sort of blends in. Uh, the Tanto version of the knife has got black pocket clips. Other than that, they're the exact same shape and everything. So, uh, you know. Take your pick on which you would prefer to have. I think all of them are available in every color, either blade style at White Mountain Knives at the time of filming. And I'm filming this on Saturday, May 22nd. And hopefully this video is live on Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. It's a good knife. It's got good hand feel. Uh, works well. It slices great. I'm very, very happy that I got this knife. And it's not expensive either. That's the great thing about it. It's not a high priced knife. Anybody can get uh, a knife like this. And, uh, you know, it's not a super fast opening knife. It's a two hand opening. I can get it open with one hand, you know, like that. So I squeeze right here with these two fingers, my middle finger and my thumb, and I get it started. And then I push the rest of it the way with my thumb. 
So let's go over all the sizes, dimensions, and stuff like that. This thing weighs 85 grams. That's 2.95 ounces. Not bad at all. Sharpness was 125 best from the factory. The cutting edge length and the blade length are the same. 83.7 millimeters, 3.3 inches. The blade thickness is 2.4 millimeters. That's uh, 95 thousandths of an inch. So almost a tenth of an inch. The blade depth, it's biggest this way. I always measure that from the spine to the blade at the widest point, or the cutting edge. Spine to the cutting edge, the whole thing's the blade, of course. 23.8 millimeters, that's 0.937 of an inch. Behind the grind, but in the middle of this flat section is where I measured it. 0.31 millimeters, 12 thousandths of an inch. Yes, so this knife can be sharpened many, many, many times over its life before it starts getting thick behind the grind. That's just great. The grind angles, like I said, uh, this is the good side. So I'll tell you the good stuff first. Around this whole straight section, it's about 21.2 degrees. And it goes over here, 21.1 degrees. So very well sharpened. This side, not so much. It starts off at about 24 and a half degrees. And then here on the belly, it's about 23.4 degrees. And there it's about 29.1 degrees. And it finishes off at 30.7 degrees. So yuck. Thankfully, it's so thin behind the grind. I can sharpen this thing up. Uh, as well as I want. 8CR13 and so thin behind the grind, I'd probably sharpen this thing at 20 degrees per side, maybe even less since it's not a heavy duty knife. And it's just a dream. A nice tip weight on the measurements. <laughs> the handle length, 111.6 millimeters, that's 4.39 inches. The grip area, it's a bit over nine centimeters, a bit over three and a half inches. The handle thickness on the G10 surface is 10 millimeters, 0.39 of an inch. The handle depth, so within the grip area, the widest point is right there, 21.1 degree millimeters, 0.83 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is up here, 30.8 millimeters, 1.21 inches. And the total length of the knife from tip to the end of the handle, 195.3 millimeters, 7.69 inches. So yeah, quite good. I was going to say before, I like this tip. It is a good tip to do delicate work. It's a good tip for doing some controlled piercing. On a slip joint, when you're doing some piercing, you always put some pressure that way on the knife. So when you're, if I was pushing into a flat surface this way, I'd also be going this way with the blade just a little bit. So uh, yeah, here's a flat surface, because I'm not going to poke it into my hand. I don't just go straight in, I go in on this kind of angle like that. If we hold this straight up and down, that might make a better sense. I don't go straight in, I go in like this. That way there's always pressure on the spine, and it's very, very safe even to do you know, piercing work. I like this knife. What's not to like? You tell me. I'm going to pause. I'm going to turn off the camera right now, take this thing apart and show you the insides. And here's how it looks taken apart. We've got a nice uh, diameter phosphor bronze washer. You know, a lot of knives have much smaller washers and the bigger the washer, the better. So that's just great. That fits right on there. And there's one on the other side as well. You can see how this piece of steel is the spring. So there's very few parts. We've got two liners, two pieces of steel, a pocket clip, and two pieces of G10 and the screws. And that's all that it takes. It's one of the reasons why it has such a low price. And you know, all this skeletonizing is why it's so lightweight. And you know, it's very simple, very easy to use. So we've got a flat back there, that's the half stop. So that holds it in the open position. There's no blade play up and down. And there was a little bit of play, play, blade play side to side when I got it. So that just means the pivot screw wasn't all the way tight. Uh, there's no Loctite on that screw. So, you know, that makes sense. Uh, I snugged it up a little bit 
and it didn't change for all my testing. So no problem there. It's just a good little knife. There, put that stop pin back in there. There we go. So that stop pin is just for when you close the knife. Well, I'll just show you. So the knife closes like that. It hits that stop pin so that the cutting edge won't hit the spine of the handle anywhere on the inside. So everything is thought of and just made very, very well. Okay, blade alignment, pretty much perfect, very good. Comfortable, light knife, good user. Oh, I haven't put the pocket clip back on, but that's okay, I'll do that later because it's almost lunchtime and I wanna finish recording this. Uh, you can use it without that as well. You know, if you're gonna put it in a sleeve, then you don't need the pocket clip. And it just looks good, feels good, works well, and is a nice knife. I think the only reason why it might be discontinued, I don't know for sure if it's discontinued, but the Civivi website, you can buy off of there now, but they're sold out as well. So I think what it might be is people don't like Chinese steel, 8CR13, 8CR14 MOB. This is 8CR14, which is a very good budget, budget steel. It's a low priced steel, but it performs very well. If you look at the chemical makeup, it's a good steel. It's, you know, Rockwell hardness, this is 58, which is, you know, only two away from 60, which is premium steel level. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, 56 was really, really good. So, and now this is like 58, 59 sometimes. 58 is pretty common for this steel. It's a good hard steel. It's durable. It lasts, uh, I mean, it holds an edge for quite a while. It's fairly tough. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, unless you're one of those people who just hates anything Chinese. But then you might as well throw away your cell phone and your computer as well, because those are Chinese too. <laughs> all right that's my mini rant for the day thanks for watching my video please leave your comments on this knife and any questions you have i love answering questions thanks for liking sharing commenting and subscribing and remember friends cut towards your chum not your thumb